Thanks for staying with us now. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing how investing in female entrepreneurs can build a more sustainable Africa. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WaysHafrica1 with the hashtag WaysShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. All right, so we have um, Jennifer. We've been looking for you since you're here. Let me quickly take your questions before we get um, the comments from our audience. I love what your organization is doing, and um, I actually really love this conversation that we're having. But I have a question. Um, now, have you had an event where you, a woman attended one of these programs, and then you guys probably found out that whatever business she's doing is not something that she should actually be doing? Because I know that your businesses, people would open because they see that the next person is doing it and she's excelling. Then I feel like I can do that also. But in the long run, you get to realize that you shouldn't actually be doing that business because it doesn't suit you. It's not something you would excel in. And you, you notice that there are some things or there are other kinds of business that your, your team feels like she would actually excel in. And then you pitch it to her, like, okay, why not try this? Why not try your hands at this? Do more research on this and see if you can actually excel in this particular type of business. Yes, uh, my, my, my answer to your question is yes. So we have had uh, instances where we've had people, you know, just, you know, apply, right, to the program with ideas that are not very targeted. And we have two levels. So we've decided to have two levels of application screen. The first is an academy process, a learning process, where you have access to data that says, these are the gaps along certain value chains, and these are the gaps in the market. It's not just about coming up with a business that suits you, that you can do. It's all about coming up with a business that's successful. For us, our aim is economic development, right? This data that says that women uh, can catalyze economic development or ensure community and uh, catalyze jobs and improve lives and send kids to school, it's very important metric for us to track. So the women that come into our program, we need to make sure that they, first of all, are capable and they see themselves within these types of businesses that will have this type of impact. Mm -hmm. So there's a learning process that helps you prep and increases your chances of being successful with your application. Once we select you, we work with you. Some people have to pivot their ideas. What that means is you might come in with an original idea because we've seen your passion and your trait and entrepreneurship spirit and your great. Um, we may have to work with you to change the idea based on market uh, realities. So yes, we've had experiences where people come in and they've been open enough to pivot their ideas because it's about, you know, business is successful when there's a, there are customers, there's a market, and people are willing to pay, <laughs> right? It's not just doing business for doing business. I'm not just making soap because it's actually make soap. No, I'm doing a business because there's a market, and I have to provide a solution that people are willing to pay for. And so when people say that, oh, I want to be successful, um, that way they're open to, to pivoting and work with them to throughout the process from start to finish. Okay. I was going mm, to okay, that's some, amazing. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I was going to, because it's in line with this question that Jennifer just asked, that, like, what are the common challenges that you face when it comes to dealing with women, you know, um, women entrepreneurs, like the common ones that you face as venture capitalists? Because um, outside of what we said about the fear of not even asking, I mean, for, the, for huge sums of money because, you know, they're thinking small. There's also that part of women businesses, like I think Lamy had said it from the beginning, they're not captured well. You don't have a structure. You do not have, you know, you do not have a proper, like somebody can walk in and see your books and see all of all those things. So you, in your experience, what has been the biggest challenge for you dealing with women in entrepreneurs? Um, so one of them is having a, a good business model, just even understanding basic business best practice. A lot of women don't have that. A lot of men do. And I'm wondering why. I mean, is it that men have access to Google more or more opportunities or exposure? I don't know. But a lot of women are not doing that homework, right? So and this information is really out there. So just understanding, like coming up with a business proposition, like a, a, you know, like a solid business plan. And we've had instances where we've had women who have kids you know in our program and you know and if you understand women that have kids it's, it's hard to, to juggle home and uh, and also trying to understand learn about business and seize opportunities again the idea is just really providing that support system we had to have programs that we had to build in a crash mm. so that they could actually bring their kids and have nanny yeah, services nice. so that they can focus while 
well, you know, they are in the accountability and coaching sessions. Awesome. So it's really, really about the, I think for me, the biggest problem is the business information, the business mm -hmm. know-how a lot of people are having. Once they, once they have it, um, it's, it's, you know, it solves the other things like financial capital. There are, there are lots of venture capital um, firms that are, are growing, that are coming up and springing up in the country today. Um, even firms are led by women and, and men are becoming educated to understand the role that women can play in doing, in growing companies. So, so they already have that, but the problem they've shared with us, so this is us included as a, as a venture capital firm, is that not a lot of women meet the criteria. Yeah. So um, what that means is, they need to do their homework. They need to be prepped. They need to be investor ready. Okay. Um, and, and, and that's where, that's where you come in. Yeah, we're going to take more questions on there uh, because we need to bring in our audience. But that's where you come in. That academy you talked about, is it free for, for women that want to come into the academy? The foundation? Yes. Yeah, so every time, yes, it, it's free. But the way it works is we have to uh, do a call for uh, a registration. Okay. So it's not like it's a, an on, on enrolling, like ongoing basis. Okay. You have to have okay. registered to apply. Okay. And, and then you access it free. Um, and then we have we select, of course, we can't select a lot of women into the program because there's a lot of green the spaces. That goes yeah. In. Um, yeah. Okay, so let me just quickly take because we need to take bring in, we have a lot of questions I from have our a audience. Question. So, good evening. You take your question, Dora. Sorry. Good evening. I'm just wondering how people like Tara was able to transform her cosmetic business to such global brand. What did she do right? What are the lessons to learn from people like her? For women, what form? What form of role modelship does the mother play with the mindset of a girl whilst growing up on her uh, self-belief? There are many times I wonder if Queen Amina had a daughter, what form of mentoring would she have given to that daughter? That's on Benson. Um, so the, the part of what did Tara do right and what lessons can we learn from her? Is it possible to keep the answer very short because we want to bring in a lot of questions? <laughs> I'll try and keep it, say three things that she did right. The okay. first is that she was bold and determined. So she knew what she, she, she had the courage to, to go out there and do big things. Second, she had clear vision of what she wanted to achieve. Third, she thought about scale. So as soon as she got the recipe and the structure right, mm -hmm. she was able to get and empower other women entrepreneur agents to do this. And I started to see Tara in different stores and different malls around the world. Mm. So those three she things, scaled. boldness, vision, and scale. Okay, so let's take your question. <laughs> Okay. Business document. Well. This is from, okay, sorry. This is from Amina in Abuja. I think the fundamental challenge is fear to start. We see it play out in financial industry with fewer women running that space. Then another one from Ineka from Yaba. I'm working on a startup idea in the financial service industry. I worry about getting funds to start. Any advice on how to go about it? Um, I'll start with the first question on how to start. I always start, I advise people to start with asking your people in your network, what are the issues you're facing? What are the challenges you're facing? Money will only flow in the direction of value. Mm -hmm. Don't just do a business because it's, you're, you're passionate about it and you like it, right? People will not pay for what you like. They'll pay for what they need. So you need to go out and to start with talking to people on your WhatsApp group, 10, 20 people and ask them, what problem are you facing and what would you pay for? Uh, solution and, and that starts to give you some ideas mm -hmm. on on how to solve it. The second question: What was the second question again? Um, um, how to get? How do how do they how do they get funding? Right. Yes. Um. Look, I said before you talk about funding, really be be investor ready, be financially ready. <laughs> um. But if you are financially ready, say you have your business value proposition sorted out, your product sorted out, your your costing and your plan sorted out. Um, there's there's bank of industry type of funding available. There are venture capital firms that are available. There are even grants. There are donor agencies like the EU and the World Bank. That there was a project we worked with with the World Bank in Kaduna. They actually funded uh, um, selected women entrepreneurs, um, even with funding. So there are grants. There's equity investment. There are loans from the bank. If you go, do a Google search, funding for entrepreneurship, a lot of these things will come up. Again, you can go to, you can send an email to helloadventuresplatform.com and we can send you uh, a list of funding ideas on how you can raise funding for your business. Awesome. Okay, Jennifer. Okay, so there's a question here from Wurla. She said, do we have investors that fund ideas? And Zainab is saying, we have a lot of women in trade. Not sure why we have not translated it to building entrepreneurs um so th there, 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 there's financial capital that funds um ideas idea stage um programs like ours well, we're not the only ones in the country they're, they're called tech hubs 
they get some funding to support people to at seed stage. Mm. So, and that doesn't come with um, equity investment. The, but I would say that the, the, the landscape for that is still growing in Nigeria. We don't have a lot of investment for early stage. It's no all patient, about to prove no your patient concept capital first. for that. But, oh, yeah. Um, so, but there, there are a few, there are grants, like I said, there are, there are international organizations that are giving grants for C stage. You just need to do your research to find that. Okay. Um, in terms of people that are doing trade, um, and why can't they scale? Again, it's, it's, it's vision, right? I've, 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 I've worked with a lady who started doing a, a, a shoe, shoe business. And if you see the, the plan for scale, you would say, uh, is it the same as people that are trading, um, people that are doing software, providing software, tech, software development, and they're thinking scale. So it's really the business model, and there's a hack and a framework for that. You just need to plug yourself in the right program Absolutely. to learn that. Well, so my question <laughs> is, um, do you think there's a dearth of mentorship amongst women? There, do you think there are adequate mentorship programs going on for women, especially the girl child? Because I think there's a bit of um, there's a gap there. Yeah. I'm, I'm pained, and I'm glad you asked this question. I'm pained that amongst women we compete, hmm. and it's it's sad. And and I think if there's any day, like a guy was asking me on on Women's Day, was it yesterday or, or Monday, that um you guys keep talking about women, 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 but you compete against each other. I don't see this support for each other. It's almost like uh, a paradox, right? I don't think there's enough. Even me, like in my circle, I have to start telling my friends, come, we need to come together and help each other achieve our goals. I don't think there's enough of that and there needs to be more, especially from those who have gone before us, right? Mm -hmm. It's good that they, 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 are, they are, and they're very few. So they talk in meetings, but it's good to, to start forming mentoring groups. I think that that's one thing. I think that's the best way to actually coach a woman to be a successful entrepreneur and beyond you're just touching, training. You're uh, even in the training, we always have to bring in mentoring and support systems to make it work and effective. Absolutely. You're touching a very soft point. You know, me. it's <laughs> happened to me. Yeah. There's this particular yeah. lady who's very popular I, I, on I, Instagram. I, oh, sorry. Who's very popular on Instagram that does what I want to do. She's a lawyer and she's into real estate program. And I sent her a message for mentoring and she said, no. Hmm. And I didn't understand why no. <laughs> well, well, we'll come to that. That oh, would be a I, topic. I think, I think, I think, I think that would be a topic for another day. I wanted to ask you, what kind of innovation do you hope to see with women businesses? You know, if we're talking about building a sustainable Africa, you know, developing Africa, what kind of innovations would be like, wow, yes, we are finally here? I would, I, I, would, I would say tech. Um, it would be great to see women uh, building, uh, you know, surveillance solutions, for example, AI, uh, machine learning, doubling into crypto. I know that it's a whole ban and everything. Um, or even just leveraging technology in other areas. So connecting, um, you know, food to market, farmers to market, technology solutions that really power other sectors in agri, in education, in healthcare right and not just you know these tech solutions but seeing them scale it'd be great to get customers from outside of nigeria right um in, in other countries in africa and around the world okay. um so i think that's what's really missing we need to get women to stop thinking about business as just tailoring and soap making so we, and there's nothing wrong with that but to well, innovate you blame that them? and innovation is not wants just auto technology is it. it's a business when government model government wants to talk about women empowerment what do they do they give grinding machine it's grinding machine you understand so i mean but let me take let jennifer take the last question jennifer Please come in. Yeah. Um, I think that was all the um, that was all the question that came to me. I initially wanted to say something about the competitiveness of women. Go ahead. And I think it's because it is it is actually deep rooted in our society. And I want to believe that we are on the way to ab abolishing that. It's not going to start now, but I've seen that there's actually progress. And um, I know that um, women always um, there are women who are willing to support other women people who, women who are willing to mentor but i feel i i need them to actually come out out there and say it's that yes we are going to mentor you enough of being silent and thinking that the next woman is about to steal your ideas Absolutely. and all of that nobody can steal. people will steal your ideas but nobody can do it better vision. than you but the funny thing it's is as that simple as that if you want vision. to teach teach 
This it guy is big enough. Support, support. Because the truth is, the more women are, the more we have women in businesses like that or in top organizations, it will be easier for you to bring up other women. You, people, women keep saying, "Oh, my, like where I work, it is, it is male saturated. Very yeah. few women are there." And when you have more women who are at the top and are bringing in more women, now we're not asking you to bring in women just because you're a woman. No, exactly. you're bringing in women that you know have the skills to be able to deliver on the job. Mm. So enough of blocking women from coming in just because, oh, if you come in, you're going to outshine me and all of that. It is not necessary. It is not necessary. So we need to actually start working together. And I hope that we'll have more <laughs> events and more programs Hopefully. that are going and to we are educate going to stick women. To, Even we women at the top, we need to start attending these events. Adese, so if I had many women, like a, a pool of women, would you be willing to, you know, come in and, you know, help us out? And, you know, what will be your final word to every woman out there, every woman entrepreneur out there? I'm sure we can innovate a, a solution to helping uh, the pool of women. Numbers are, are critical. Um, but my, my final word is, look, you have innate potential within you. You already have a, a rumbling in your stomach that you want to do big things, and you can. I would say you should lift your head at high. You're going to be successful if you put your heart to it. And there are people that are available to help you. There's a lot of information out there, so you need to go out and look for that information. Um, if you need more help, Again, you can send an email to hello at venturesplatform.com or follow us on social media to learn more about the opportunities that are available. Um, I want to speak to men, that men, you know, you know what to do, you know what women can do. So support them. I want to speak to women in high places, not just men, don't just mentor, but also open the doors for women Thank who have the skill set. I want to speak to policymakers. The need, there's need for us to create the enabling environment. This issue with collateral, these are policy issues that need to change. So let's let's do the right thing. And it's not everybody that's supposed to even be an entrepreneur. They are intrapreneurs, that women that actually support businesses. I like the story of the girl, is it Teju Alani, that is head of partnerships yeah. now? She's an entrepreneur in our own in our own entrepreneur in her own right, yeah. right? She's not the founder of Google. But, but she's, she's doing, doing big, big stuff where she is. Absolutely. So you don't always have to be an entrepreneur. You can be an entrepreneur as well. So Absolutely. good luck. And I'm here, we're here to support. Thank you so much. I mean, for I, I'm sure every woman that has watched this show tonight, they're, they're, you know, they've been charged and powered to, to, you know, to, to take on the big, um, the big bites. Don't just wait and say, I want to do crayfish business. You know, those kind of things. Mm -mm. We're not doing that anymore. We want to be listed in the stock exchange, you know, well, that kind of business. Ooh, I'm <laughs> ask me my final thoughts. Oh, what's your final thought? Because we have one minute to go. <laughs> education, uh, education, education, education. Absolutely. For every girl child. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Adeze. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Lamy. It's been a fantastic conversation. All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to in, in, inform, inspire, and influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you are a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handles, as this will be an all-year-round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on ways. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. The glass ceiling that once limited a woman's career path have paved a new road towards business ownership where women can utilize their sharp business acumen while building strong family ties. So nothing will stop us. Yeah, we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.